This episode is sponsored by Rocket Money. So, Nikki, I don't know about you, but we have been subscribed to a lot of different services over the years. We have. Yes, we have. Sometimes I forget we subscribed. Yeah, I think a lot of people do. And that's where Rocket Money comes in. Cancel unnecessary subscriptions with Rocket Money today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash STDTY. Seriously, it could save you hundreds a year. That's rocketmoney.com slash STDTY. Hello, welcome back to Shit They Don't Tell You. I'm Nikki Limo. Hello, everybody. It's it's the Crypto King. Yeah, I, aka Steve Green. Yeah. Stephen Paul Green. Yes. Please don't use my legal, legal name. That's the only name I know. Mark, please edit that out. I don't, people know, don't, people I don't, don't know, know that. I don't know any other nicknames. People know me by, by my nicknames, and I would like I to keep it I don't know any way. other nicknames. Anyway, we are back and ready to answer more of your questions yes. that you have submitted. P.S. If you have a question that you would like to submit, submit to podcast at Nikki.limo. That's podcast at N-I-K-K-I dot L-I-M-O. If you have a burning question you would like to submit to two non-professional at anything really i mean not really <laughs> that's for sure not really professionals at anything. also if you'd love the show you want to support the show check yeah. us out on patreon.com slash sticky yes um we do monthly live streams i do a weekly live stream called crypto corner where i talk about all the things i'm doing in the crypto space yes and it's very fun very and enjoyable. we do a free world poker tournament every, every month usually yes. with cash prizes for the yes. top three players uh, very fun. I did a whole like poker one on one video last week. Well, it wasn't a video; it was a live stream for our Patreon last uh, month. So everybody's getting really good at poker. You're missing out. And also, we dropped these podcast episodes a couple days early for the Patreon as a thank you to support the show. We love y'all, and you get your questions taken first. If you are a Patreon member and you submit a question, we will take your question yes. first. It's about a day early on the on the Patreon episodes. FYI. Yeah, about a day early. About a day early. Yeah. I mean, it's like a couple days early for the video and one day early for yes, the audio. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. All right. So we got a couple questions that you have submitted and we're going to jump right in today. Again, disclaimer, we are not experts at anything. So don't. I think we're experts at cleaning up cat poop. Though. Like don't sue us. Oh, yeah, for sure. We're definitely not experts at cleaning up cat poop. At least my husband is not. Oh, well, I think. Um, we, I do, I sure do it a lot. A lot is, uh, two, sure do it quite two, a bit. he did it two whole times in the past month. I, I do it quite a bit. Wow. We have a lot of That's cats. a lot. Anyway, we have a question and it's way more important than how often you've scooped cat poop, which is not very much. Hi, Nikki and Steve, heart emoji. I've been subscribed for years Yo. since Tasty Tuesdays started. Holy shit. That was a long time ago. That was 2014. Crazy. But I've never needed your advice until now. Wow. Oh, shit. I just found out that my fiance has a porn addiction. Shit. Mm. We've been together for five years. In, we've been together for five years, engaged for two, and we are about to move into our first home together. I never had a problem with him watching porn, and I always knew that he did, just not to the extent that it was actually happening. About six months ago, I walked into our office. We both work from home, and I found him masturbating while he was supposed to be working. Oh, he's fucking getting it. I do this all the time. Okay. I was obviously hurt by this because I was home and never turned him down. What do you mean you do this all the time? You throw it away like that. Well, I, I do it when I'm stressed. Like, oh, honestly, okay. like, and work stresses me out. Yeah, just like, get, get if it I out. can't focus, like, because I have ADD, and so, like, I feel like my brain just wants to focus on a thousand different things. So then, if I just, like, masturbate, like, once, like, get it out, my brain, like, just settles on one thing. Okay. And it's, like, not even fun. Like, it's not even, like... Yeah, you're just, like, getting... so into my... You're, you're like, so changing horny. train tracks. Yeah, it's just more like, ugh, get, it, get all this energy out. Like, I see. Like, there's, too, there's an abundance of energy, and it just needs to get out. Because, obviously, um, was she truly horny, she would come to me. Yeah, because we both work from home, and... She would come to me? Although, she says that she never turns him down, and I have been turned down before... So hey, I get turned down by you two kids. Yeah, I'm not. I'm just, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Like it's easier to just like, hey, it's just the middle of the day. I can just that's get true. get one out really quick and then like focus on my work. That's true. <laughs> you know, that's, that's very. And accurate. I would still have sex with you later in the day if you wanted to. I believe. I wouldn't that. like take away. I believe that from that. Anyway, so and I but I don't need to watch porn to do that. I just use my imagination. Anyway. Here we go, back into the question mode. I was obviously hurt by this because I'm at, I was home and I never turned him down. We had a discussion about it and he told me he wouldn't watch porn again. Fast forward to a few days, that's a really ambitious. Okay, <laughs> fast forward to a few days ago, I see that he has bookmarked a porn website on the computer. I ask him about it and find out that he has downloaded 
hundreds of porn videos, watches them almost mm. every day while I'm sleeping, and even downloads them during work, sometimes within 30 minutes of starting his shift. Turns out he's been a porn addict his entire life and somehow accidentally bookmarked their website without noticing shit he didn't cover his tracks that's not a good porn art i'm extremely hurt because he never disclosed this to me prior to us getting engaged and buying a house together oh fuck this addiction has affected our relationship both in the physical aspect and the mental aspect he turns down sex in favor of masturbating Ugh. and when we do have sex he occasionally loses interest and our relationship isn't the same as it was years ago he definitely doesn't view me as being as attractive as the woman he watches on his computer and his actions reflect that in the way he treats me I feel more like a roommate than his fiance most of the time he's committed to help to getting help and is signed up for a 12 step program virtual meetings and is getting in touch with a therapist do I stay with him and try to help him overcome his porn addiction knowing that it could get even worse in the future if he doesn't succeed aka progressing to sexting cheating etc or do i leave now and just throw away the last five years of my life that were otherwise perfect confused and hurt yo you have every right to yes. be confused and hurt yes. i just did i want you to know that me saying that i do that i masturbate um during work hours uh is not anything in comparison because what you're actually heard about is the deception yeah it's not about the masturbating people masturbate that's a normal thing that happens what you're and we we are cool about that yeah it's like well it's, and also we talk about i mean like yeah. i like i said i'm ready to go it's not even yeah. like it's a whole different thing we're very sex but, positive around here yes but i um what i think that what you're feeling is definitely the rejection of and a feeling like he would rather masturbate yeah. to porn than have an intimate and how could you not sexual feel about that? physical contact with you look he actually feels more intimate with porn than with you and that's yes. that's what's going on that's absolutely the issue and you need to he needs to psychologically figure that out and the i've i and the other thing is i have friends who have been who have yes, dealt with exactly. this and it is not a quick journey like it is I'm almost it's happy. I'm happy that you have found this and maybe by divine intervention that he accidentally bookmarked these websites so that you could find it, that he was lying to you. Yeah. You know, that part is actually more important. The, the fact that he was lying to you about it after promising that he would give it up. Whether or not, you know, you agree to give it up, whatever, That's that yeah. was where he had room to negotiate. But once he told you, I promise I won't do this, and then he goes and lies to you about it, not only like he like you know let one slip but he downloaded all of it like trying to get away with dudes loading hard drives up yeah yeah he's getting yeah. dongles out he's fucking I'm plugging them in kind of happy that happened to you so you can see how bad it is and that you can make an informed decision yes. rather than signing a legal document that binds you like yes. forever yeah. and like legally and and getting divorced is so much more expensive than getting married um so now you have a choice and you didn't give me much detail about how the previous years have been. Yeah. Like, like, what do you love about this guy? Do you think you could find that in another person? Don't worry so much about the sunken cost of like, you spent five years and I'll- Never do that. Never do that. Never do that, Because please. girl, you have so much more life to live. Yes. And like, these five years is like a little blip on the radar. It's not even like, it's like you graduated high school. Okay, whatever. Like you had four years at high school. It exactly. was about five years. Exactly. Like it, it goes so fast. Like in the grand scheme of things, it's way more important to value your happiness than uh, like how much that you put a couple years into something. Right. You know? Correct. And we are very much in the boat of wanting people to have the long lasting kind of happiness in a relationship. So I personally think this is a big deal to me um if i if i was you if i was in your situation and obviously it's so much easier to say as an outsider but sex and intimacy is really important i think it's really important it's the most important thing i don't know if it's the most important well, well, but, uh, okay but, uh, but it's a really important component well as far insofar as um establishing that connection because if you and i have gone for a while without yeah 
Like there's a connection that we can just feel is missing. Yeah. And then we can reestablish it afterward. And it really does feel the next morning. I'm like, oh, my yeah. God, they're like, it feels like we're linked back. But in. it's even less about the like whether or not we did had sex or had physical contact, but more about that you want to like, yes. you know, yeah, that's like true. I feel like with her because like, with us, when it goes a while, it's because of some scheduling conflict. Yeah. Like well, you were super busy and then I was super busy or some yeah. shit happened where we, could, we couldn't physically do yeah. it, but we both wanted to. Yes. With this, it feels like, and I feel like I've been here before mm -hmm. in this girl's shoes, like where we're in the same house and you like literally don't want me. Right. Like you don't want to have sex with me. And if you don't want to have sex with me now, I'm never getting younger than this. Yeah, like exactly. I'm only getting older from here. So I'm about to lock into a legal contract with you that uh, that pledges my loyalty to you forever, sexually, exclusively, forever. And this is the youngest and hottest I'm going to be. And you don't want me now. Yeah. Like, that's a big deal. Like, I feel like I don't think I could deal. I, I don't think I could go through with it. Yeah. And if you want to try to work through it, I would say maybe, I mean, postpone the wedding for sure. I don't know if you set a date already, but um, like, see if you can get through it. Like, see, like, give it six months. And if. Well, if okay, he, so he promises this thing, right? Addictions are really hard yeah, to break. Yeah, addictions are hard, but he promised this thing. Yeah. Didn't work out so far. He's now seeking help. Yes. Or he says he's going to seek help. He says he's going to seek help. Not, I think it's yeah. really just up to that. Like, is he going to... He is signed he, up for his 12-step program. Is, so signing up is one thing, right? You got to show okay. up. You got to, like, be there. He's getting in touch with a therapist. Like, if he doesn't show up for that, he's not going to show up for you. I think you can kind of write up. Right yeah. up after that. But let's say he does get with a therapist and then he relapses. Like, you know, like. Oh, for sure. I'm how, just thinking of our friend who. No, me too. And it worked out pretty good. But it didn't because oh, there right. was quite a few relapses. Right. Like, she just stayed committed. Got it. And, you know, a lot of that is because they got married, had a right. kid, had yeah. a house. Like, they have a lot together. She, uh, okay, you already do have a house together. So that is one thing. And it's a crazy market. And, I mean, maybe you want to make it work from, like. Or you're give, pot it a, committed, give it a shot. As they yeah, say you're kind poker. of you're kind of pot committed, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you don't you're not married yet. You don't have a kid, so you can you kind of have one foot in the door, but you can kind of get out right now. So yeah. I would give it give it six months. See how how much he values this. Like, is does is he serious about getting help, or is he just like working in the moment? Because addictive personalities and people with addictions, it's not like their intentions might be like, I don't want to hurt my loved ones. I want to stop this addiction, but it doesn't mean that they can just do it, you know, oh, of course even so. with help. It's, it's really, really hard. And so it's up to you. If you feel like you can commit to that for the long haul and essentially kind of sacrifice your happiness, like, in, yeah, that's like, not going to be worth it. Or kind of gamble your happiness. Like, it. if he doesn't get help, you're not going to be happy ever. Exactly. And and if he does get it and it does succeed, then great. Maybe you will be happy. But you know, then you have the other, all the other relationship stuff to work through as well. Like, you know, there's other think parts in a relationship that are work, and you're just this is like a crazy, crazy thing on top that you yeah. have to work through. This is tough. This is a toughie. This isn't like there's no easy mode answer. There isn't. There really isn't. Um, wish I could give you one. Wish I could just say, Mark, hit the button. Yeah, I mean, it, it really just like, I wish you, I wish he, having this addiction and dealing with it isn't so bad if it wasn't also that he was rejecting her. Yeah, you know? exactly. Well, exactly. I mean, that's, that's the biggest, that's what's affecting her the most. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Yeah, that's really hard. I, I have to feel important to my, like, Yo, like yeah. I have to feel like I'm, I'm number one to my spouse because they're my number one. Like I put them number one. Exactly. If I was doing something that really made Steve unhappy, like I don't know what I would do. Like I would really just like I, I have to like it. He's my number one, and so yeah, I don't know. I I just don't think I could. I couldn't do it. Yeah. But I wish you the best, and if you are going to commit to. Seeing with her, just know you don't have to do it forever. Just because you're no. saying, even if you get married, even if that you go through with that, like you don't have to do it forever. I think people think like, oh, I already put six six years or five years or whatever. Yeah. But if it's really not working out, like just know that there is better out there. Like you. Oh yeah. Oh, you, oh, you can you always find pivot. someone that that puts in the equal amount that meets you halfway that really like is there for you and you can like 
rely on them. You can always pivot. Like if you lied to me, I don't. I can never rely on you. Yeah. Like you exactly. just you could be saying anything, and the, like the it doesn't tr- matter. We always like to say around here that trust is like the layer one of your relationship. It's like the the base layer. Yeah. So you have to keep that like solid. That as has a to rock. be a hundred percent. Yeah, because like you know, and cracks in the foundation Nick, are going to make the whole house crumble. Goes and travels crumble. all the time. I go travel all the time. Like the idea that either of us is cheating on each other is nuts yeah. to both of us. Um, you but I've ha- never felt that way in any other relationship. Where oh, exactly. Like, like every other relationship, I have not been felt so safe. It's exactly. That, like, you, even if somebody showed me footage of you cheating on me, I don't even think I'd same. believe it. Same. I said I'd that like, about you. Yeah, I'd be like, this is CGI bullshit. Yeah. I'm like, this is a fucking But that's because I feel so loved. Like, yeah. If you are, if you, he was cheating, he's doing a really good job at like making me feel loved. Same. So I'd be so confused. Same. Usually if someone's cheating, they can't do the other part. They <laughs> yeah. really can't make you feel loved. Well, that's why, you know, and that's really what ultimately what it comes down to. And especially in a situation like this, it's like just making sure you're putting your partner first. Yeah. We all have bullshit. Yeah. But making sure that your partner is on a pedestal and feeling like they're in first place. The other thing that happened with the couple that we knew is that like. There's like a lot of resentment that gets built. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it's a lot of lying and deception. Yes. Like, so that trust thing is just, it's like you have to be able to continuously forgive as well. Yeah. Because they're, they might mess up. But you, but in, in, you know, you're, so you're trying to progress a relationship, but also trying to forgive, but you haven't forgiven yet, but yeah. you're progressing the relationship. Like in, inside you, it's still there. Mistakes you know? get made. Yeah. And that's the thing. You can't force the progression, but also like, you know, do band aid forgiveness if it's not real. Yeah. You can't do it, folks. You just can't. It's not real. That's a tough one, man. I'm so sorry you're going through this, and I really wish you the best. Yeah. Like, I know that you'll make the right choice if you just follow follow your intuition, follow what your heart says. If your heart is like, nah, he's a good man, I think he can do this. It's just not the vibe I'm getting from the mm-hmm. email, but maybe I'm missing something. So if if that is what you feel inside, like, go with it. But... Just know you have outs. Don't worry about that sunken cost thing. Yes, don't do the sunken cost fallacy shit. Yeah. You can always fold your hand. You're not pot committed. Yeah, you're not all the way pot committed. You can fold your hand. Yeah. Get out of there. All right, next question. We have one from, well, I don't know, I don't know if they want to be Name. anonymous. So help, I might be a homewrecker, sad face. Oh, whoa. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Hello, Iceman and Icebreaker, or Steve and Nikki. You can call me Precipitation to keep me anonymous. Sorry in advance, this might be long. First saw Nikki on a random interview about paranormal experiences and Steve on his prank ta- channel, and then became a big fan once I saw you two on JK. Hmm, random interview about paranormal experiences. Oh, maybe that was Denise, Denise Vlogs? I think it was Denise Vlogs. Okay, mm. you two are relationship goals. You both help me a lot. I work alone, and you two are like, Friends in my ear. Oh, that's so sweet to oh, hear. Love I love hearing that. Okay. I'm in a long distance relationship. I'm 23 and live in Canada and she's 28 and lives in Texas. Before meeting the love of my life, I was very comfortable being single and did not want a long distance relationship whatsoever. By fate, I know it's cheesy. We met playing a video game. Oh, I love that. And our chemistry knows no bounds. We've been dating for half a year. Honestly, without even without the physical connection, this has been the best relationship I had. She's not afraid to roast me, shower, but we, shower me with affection, and we connect on a deep level. One month of officially dating, we talked about marriage, and surprisingly, she told me that she is married, which was just shocker what to me. What in the absolute Ooh, fuck? Okay. Wait, what are you talking Wait. about? Wait, what? I tried to pry in because that's a big freaking detail. You try to pry in. She told me that they weren't really talking and was hesitant on speaking about it. But after a while, she opened up and said the reason why her marriage wasn't really working was because they couldn't have a baby together. Now, fast forward to this past month, I've been really pushing to travel and visit her. She would make an excuse saying that her brother wouldn't like me because he's racist. Why would that stop me if he lives an hour (laughs) away from her? Like, he doesn't have to know. In the end, my girlfriend said she would, my girlfriend said she would much rather visit me. Then eventually, with me prying into why she's not comfortable with visiting, told me that she lived with her in-laws. That broke my heart, and we split for a few days. She said that she swears she wasn't using me and genuinely fell in love with me, that she can't support herself, and that's why she lives with her husband. She doesn't live with her family because they're toxic. And that she is serious about me. I decided to get back with her on the condition that she promises she's not romantically involved with him. I know it sounds super dumb, 
But she just lives with them, that's all. I decided to trust her, but it's difficult that she kept that away from me, but I'm not mad at her for it anymore because I decided to continue with this relationship. It's just that I feel kind of insecure and jealous now. Knowing her, she likes to make me jealous by making jokes like I'm ge- I'm getting dick, which is which was funny before, but now it's not. Oh, like she's saying that like she's getting dick. Uh-huh. Um, that's oh yeah, that's not she's funny. She's just she's just trying that to layer was, over what's going on. There's a small hurt inside. I know that you both are going to tell me to break up, but what should yeah. I do? Break up. Mark, yeah. hit Mark the button. Hit it. Boom. Boom. Hit it hit it do, with your forehead, Mark. How do I overcome this insecurity slash jealousy? It's a complicated situation, but I potentially see a future together, especially with the connection we have, and I still feel an immense amount of love for her, but slowly could feel myself wanting to distance, distance myself from her, ironically. This is the only bump. The only bump. Bro, this chick is toxic, dude. <laughs> this is the only bump. This isn't like the last one where it's like somebody's trying to seek help and they're like, yeah, I'm, I'm probably wrong. This is like, hey, I'm like right and I'm getting a dick. A serial And like, this is sick. And like, in my house. you know, yeah. Like they're, Should I they're like gaslighting make them you. dinner? I love you both, Steve and Nikki. I hope you have continued oh success. This is long God. and dumb, so um, and so punch me and I don't proofread. Thanks again. Okay, so many things, man. And I'm so sorry. Okay, one... I just feel like I don't know if this is your first relationship, but it this seems isn't early. This isn't quite a relationship yet. No. Okay, I know it feels like it because like you met and you connected, but this you Get basically met someone in a chat room, and you guys have been texting each other. Like that is not dating for six months. No. Um, so I'm and sorry. Her your girlfriend, like you are. Yeah. And she's a married woman who lives with her husband. And you don't even know if she's a catfish. Like, you don't even know. Like, it could be. Like, she's, I can't really support myself. Like, where is this leading? It's for six months now. And I now, assume he's heard her voice. Maybe. I'm okay. Maybe. Maybe. But I also saw clips from the Tua documentary. You can also be a catfish be... and be a girl. A, oh, good point. Like, I could catfish somebody and, like, make them think that I am in love with them. Like, I could do that right now. I could go into a chat room and... And make someone think that I'm in love with them. And then be like, I'm actually married. Oh, I actually live with my in-laws. Can you send me money? You'd be one of the greatest catfishes of all time. Thank you. Well, all I mean by that is like, it's like, oh no, she wasn't this. She's actually Nikki Limo. (laughs) 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 It's like, oh, that's pretty tight. That'd be so (laughs) It's like, that's kind of tight actually. Oh, cool. That's pretty cool. That'd be so random. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, no, look. Uh, the yeah, reason like, uh, why you're reaching out to us is because you know something sus. And 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 I'm trying to. I maybe I'm we're being too blunt. And I'm sorry. I'm not. I don't mean to like. I know you're really feeling these things, and I'm trying to help you out. But it. Um. I guess from just an older, wiser perspective, this isn't. It's not what you think it is and i'm i almost feel like a mom trying to protect yeah, you it's yeah. like puppy love you know what when i was 14 i actually fell in love with a guy online i told you this before you told me this before right um okay that was my first love like i was just i thought i was in love with this guy yeah. okay i met him on an eminem message board i was a moderator and we would voice chat there was like a voice chat room which was really high tech at the time yeah. like and Super we would advanced. voice chat till like two in the morning and i'm 14 i've never kissed a guy before i'm like so like this is my boyfriend. I call him my boyfriend. Whoa. I'm like, you know, like same thing. Like, and uh, we send each other Christmas cards, like that kind of shit. And then he randomly tells me like he went to prom with somebody <laughs> and like, like he's like in love with her and he's like pining over her and this girl doesn't like him that much. And I'm like, why are, we, why are you telling me that? Like your girlfriend, first of all. And <laughs> secondly, you said I could tell you anything. Yeah. And I'm like, this doesn't like, I wanted to go meet him. He lived in Philadelphia and I was trying to, sneakily plan a family trip there oh like my. saying i wanted to learn about the history i want to learn about the liberty bell bitch yeah exactly exactly that's so funny. i could secretly like wow like you're find manipulative him. as hell i was like how can i make this not sound sus <laughs> i really am obsessed with the liberty bell i love benjamin fucking Franklin. like where did they all, all the four the forefathers like, meet hey so where do they sign this thing anyways yeah can I go there? I Can really I go to like Hall? that football team, the Eagles. <laughs> now that would make your dad pissed. Yeah, he true. Wouldn't, he wouldn't go. Yeah, you know, he wouldn't go. Like, but what if I was like got really like committed? That's incredible. Like researched the hell out of Philadelphia so I could. Get, That's so good. Like she's just obsessed with Philadelphia. What if you now? became like an, a a couch Eagles fan? Yeah. Like, I tell you, every year, this year, it's our year. <laughs> it's our year. It's our year. Like, I'm burning down our house when the <laughs> Eagles win. Yeah, you're throwing I'm batteries like... at people in the street. 
<laughs> when you guys win or lose. My point is I was young, but I didn't think I was wrong. And I didn't like I thought he really cared about me the same. Like we would he just had the same sense of humor. He like everything about him, I like loved his voice and everything about him. I just thought it was so real to right, me. Easy. It was so real. Your I still think about world. him. I'm obsessed with Philadelphia. Okay. Can we go there sometime? Yeah, we'll go. <laughs> so um yeah, and it and like once I actually had like a real relationship, like in like physical form, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I thought that that whole thing was was real. It was just, it seemed real at the time, but it, it just. Yeah, it, no, it's feelings though. It's it, feelings. It's feelings. Yeah. It's not love. Yeah. It, and, but hey, you know, I'm not in this person's situation. So all we can do is give and you also, our perspectives. Yeah, you kind of are a home wrecker if you do that. So like yes. what you got to say is, okay, I'll give you benefit of the doubt. Let's say it's real as fuck. Like, yeah, let's, let's say she's into you so hard and you guys are like, you're like the love of each other's lives. Okay, so then you got to put your foot in the sand and you or draw a line, draw a, draw a line in the sand. Sorry, I've got to put two uh, things together. Mm -hmm. um, but you got to draw a line and say, hey, this is kind of, I love you. I think you're the freaking best. I think that we are a match made in heaven. But it's, I don't feel good about um, being with you when, you when you live with your husband who you say you're not really into but like you know you talk about having sex with him all the time and uh, as your boyfriend that doesn't make me feel good so um, I'm sorry but uh, this is a deal breaker and I need you to leave him and if you're serious about us then maybe we'll maybe we'll see each other again sometime after you know like maybe yeah. we'll maybe we can pick this back up where it's where we Once left you off clean your shit up yeah but i you have to have standards too exactly you know like exactly well and there, she's withholding so much she withheld this this one secret then she withheld the second secret what's the next one is she have another baby on the way like are we being for to real? me what it sounds like is she doesn't get attention from her husband yeah. they can't have a baby they're having a lot of struggles and she wants a little bit of attention so you gave her attention the attention that she was craving but she's not really committed to you like she doesn't want to go visit you she's making up all the excuses she doesn't want you to visit her she's making up all the excuses it's very clear that you're just kind of being used you and are honestly and i'm going into complete conspiracy zone for this one but maybe they're just using you to get pregnant ah. like who the fuck knows maybe the husband's down oh. like how is she getting sneaking away so much so often yeah blah 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 maybe they're just using you to get a fucking pregnant and then wow. you're gonna get ditched bro you don't fucking know that's like, you crazy you don't know like yeah Huh, that's good. I, uh, look, that's good. I've been reading a lot of Reddit Am I the Asshole? And I think all the, everything's possible. Yeah, now. that's everything, good. Er, everything dickish is possible. Yo, I, and especially. If she's using you for one thing, why not the other? Especially strangers meeting on the internet. You yeah, know? Exactly. They don't fucking know you. They don't fucking know you. They, don't, they don't care about hurting you. Yeah. What was the origin of your meeting, too? What was she looking for? Yeah, she was playing a video game. Yeah. She's like, this guy's giving me attention. I agree with you. Yeah, I don't know. She's got your under finger and look if if she was seeding, you know, like she, if she was out there saying like I I'm wrong for this, I want to fix this. That's a different thing. I'm stuck yeah. in a situation. Sounds like she's just saying this is my circumstance. You got to come deal with it, and yeah. that's whack to me. That's and, whack. And it doesn't me. sound like you've been like this hurts my feelings. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry. Exactly. I'll, I'll, it sounds like she's anything. like, we'll deal with it, bitch. She's like, yeah, this is my this is what I'm where this I'm what at. I'm doing with. Which kind of <laughs> sounds like a rejection to me. It just sounds exactly. like, hey, you're just kind of a th fun thing on the side that I like to like get attention from, but like and maybe I'll get pregnant from. It's not like real. Like the you guys have not had any physical contact at all whatsoever. I would start counting the, your relationship start from there. Yeah. Amen. So, on that note, I'm sorry you're going through it. Yeah, I know we really are. regardless of whether Rooting or not it's real, like your feelings are probably getting hurt. So I I wish you the most healing from that, but I think you got to get out of that situation. Um, we're asking Mark to literally slam his forehead into the yeah. breakup button, which That's we haven't done for anyone before. No, we we're asking Mark to concuss himself, Burrito, if possible. If possible. And I think that he should actually. He might be concussed right now. I think he. I, well, if the rest of this ed episode isn't very edited, um, we'll know why. We'll know. Yeah. So, all right. On that note, we're going on a break. When we come back, we will answer more of your. Questions again. If you have a question to submit, podcast at nikki.limo. And if you want to join our Patreon and have party hang times, 
patreon.com slash sticky s-t-i-k well said thank you this episode is sponsored by rocket money so nikki i don't know about you but we have been subscribed to a lot of different services over the years we have yes we have sometimes i forget we subscribed yeah i think a lot of people do and that's where rocket money comes in so rocket money is going to help you figure out all the subscriptions that you have that you're not using and then most importantly they help you unsubscribe to them yeah uh okay so my biggest thing are apps were like uh on certain i don't want to say the brand of phone that i have but when you go there and sometimes they ha- they turn it on auto renew i did not know this i had a, a subscription to an app that i thought i just paid a year for i didn't know it was on auto renew and then all of a sudden a hundred dollars is missing from my account and i totally forgot that i that it was on auto renew i actually didn't even know i didn't forget i just didn't know it was on auto renew and there or how I don't know how many things like this. Maybe I noticed it this time because it was a hundred dollars. But all the things that are like fifteen dollars, ten dollars here, it all adds up. And if you don't know what you're subscribed to, or you button clicked during the pandemic, look, you're not alone. But Rocket Money is going to help you. And it shows you all your subscriptions in one place and cancels what you don't want for you. Yeah, most Americans think they spend around eighty dollars a month on subscriptions when the actual total cost is closer to two hundred dollars plus. Yeah, that's right. You could be wasting hundreds of dollars each month on subscriptions you don't even know about. It drives me absolutely crazy. So it definitely helps to see them all in one place and then just cancel what you don't want. Super easy. It makes my brain feel good to just see them all in one place and just like check the ones that I don't want anymore. Cancel unnecessary subscriptions with Rocket Money today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash STDTY. Seriously, it could save you hundreds a year. That's rocketmoney.com slash STDTY. And we're back. And I hope that you bought everything we told you to buy because we wouldn't tell you to buy it if we didn't want you to and think that it was good for you. Helps the channel. Thank you. Good for your life and good for our channel. And we appreciate you. Jumping back in. This next question is called keeping convenient information from your spouse dash dash lies. Oh, shit. (laughs) Hi, Nikki and Steve. Please keep me anonymous. You got it. Hippopanonymous. Hippopanonymous. I did email you once previously and I tricked you into reading all the compliments and no problems. But now I do have a problem. Uh Yeah, right. I don't don't trust you. Okay, I hope you don't mind helping me despite the length. P.S. You are both amazing and funny and make me, my life brighter. Oh, we love you. Thank You're you. You're awesome. We love you, Hippopononymous. Okay, I'm really private about the inner workings of my relationship, and I had no good example when I was growing up. So sometimes I feel like I've got no clue what's normal. Oh, well, that, that makes sense. Yeah. That's why your podcast and Big Mood, etc. helps a lot. We've been together seven years, just married this summer, and we grew up in entirely different cultures and continents. So I think this contributes to how much work we've had to put into our communication and growth. Absolutely. I love him so much, and I know beyond a doubt he loves me more than anything. Let's get to the problem. My problem is that my husband likes to conveniently keep secrets from me. Jeez, we have a theme going with this uh, episode. Defo. Mostly it's spending related because, uh, spending related. Okay, so the same theme of keeping secret lies and secrets, but different subjects. Okay, mostly it's spending related because only two years ago, he finally grew up and realized he needs to be more sure about money and spending. That might sound judgmental of me, but he said this himself. Before that, he really was spending like he was in a different tax bracket, but not in debt. Now he's doing a whole lot better and really stepped up to take care of his family that we're creating together, but he still feels too embarrassed sometimes to tell me when he's bought something for himself. So I only find out when I see it, and if I bring it up, he's defensive. I know I'm, I've been judgmental in the past, but I'm really trying to be supportive now because I've seen that he's committed to his priorities. Another example, when we first got together, we were really young, under 25, Nikki. Good to know. And there were several instances of him messaging girls and hiding it from me, like Yo. he needed the extra attention. Ooh, I don't hate when people hide shit from me. I will find out. I will find I, out. You know. I know. <laughs> Those really hurt. We even took a two-week break, uh, uh, quote unquote, because... The inappropriate messages turned out to be with a coworker. This was five years ago. Oh, we can boy. joke about it now. Now, recently, he's been spending more time with a particular female coworker. Let's call her Allison because they've had to go on business trips together. Oof. <laughs> oh, shit, Oof. dude. I don't like her. We all work together in parentheses. And he knows this. 
Uh, yesterday was the start of another trip. It was all going well before I tried to head out to the door to schedule uh, to walk him to the scheduled train. He stops and is really confused, and then says he's actually going to pick up Allison in our car first because otherwise she has to take a cab to get to the train, and she lives close by. He had told me that morning that he is he was catching a specific train at twelve o three, but then the story became he has to pick her up at twelve o three. The fuck. You don't have to pick someone up at a specific minute of the hour. Obviously. <laughs> so true. That is really weird. Obviously, that hurt. Not because he wants to help. It's logical and she had a lot to carry. But because he kept it from me. There was literally no time to talk it through because I didn't want him to be late for his flight. But over a day later, I'm still really mad about it. I would be too. Yeah, that's weird. Keep anonymous. That's actually weird. I don't want to be a wife that feels like you can't tell things to. I'm really sensitive and I do react to things in big ways, namely crying. Nikki, you feel me? Yeah, fuck yeah. But I would cry about this for yeah, sure. Yeah. But I would cry out of frustration and anger. Like, this is not okay. Okay. But they, but that's what he married, and it's not an excuse to conveniently keep things from me. Steve, please don't hate this guy because I promise he's so wonderful in so many ways, but it's painful to be caught in this loop of, I didn't want to tell you because I know how you'd react. Well, I'm reacting badly because you kept it from me. How do I communicate this effectively? Thanks, guys. I respect you guys so much. Hey, Thank we, you so I, much. We love you. I'm not going to hate this guy because you asked me not to, but yeah, I will say this. There is a there is a um, an intention yes. behind his lie that is very weird, mm-hmm. right? Like like if it is so innocent, yeah, then why lie about it? Right. Like 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 if it, if it's so innocuous, it's like. Oh man, I meant to say like I was picking her up at twelve oh three, and not like that. That that's when the plane was uh, the the plane was leaving. Yeah. Why not just fucking say that? Like, why are you? Why is your details not squaring up? It, it's because the intention is not is not correct. Okay. Um, I'm gonna play devil's Please advocate. Do. Please do. Because uh, I'm on your side, but yeah, I, know. I just um, well, let's try. Let's maybe. Try. So sometimes you kind of exclude details from me because you're like well then you'd ask this and like i don't want to deal with this and then you get mad and you yeah, that's about buying paint at home depot yeah like you know what i mean like yeah it, it's about little things it doesn't undermine our relationship like recently um steve <laughs> yeah let's go was a little drunk do it and it was thanksgiving he made a wonderful turkey by he, the way a turkey that you said could not have been made yeah, I didn't. I didn't believe it was going to be possible. Think and I could do it. To be honest, I'm not eating the turkey. I don't eat meat, so I was like, "Well, they'll have to deal with it. Guests will have to deal with it." Yeah. But like, she didn't think I could do it. She she woke me up. This is a man that burns everything. Like, can't even like make but not bacon, turkey. but not turkey without the entire <laughs> like the smoke alarms going off and like dumping Tabasco and everything. So, but not turkey. A turkey. I've never made turkey, but I've heard from cooks, like people that actually cook things, say that it's really hard. So I'm like, no fucking way could Steve do it. I actually really wish it was a Tasty Tuesday because I, the amount I did not believe this would happen yeah. is to the depths of the Marianas Trench. I know that. I did not, like, I had, a, if I was betting the over under, like, I would have lost my entire bankroll I know. because. You lost like, mortgage. <laughs> but can I also say this oh, too? My house, yeah. You also doubted me. You've doubted me many times in our, yeah. in our marriage in our, and our relationship. Okay. But. Um, when I made a cheesecake and it looked like things were not going well, yeah. that ended up being, uh, can I, can I quote you? Yeah. The best cheesecake you've ever had in okay. your life. Fair. Okay. But that's not about this. So that was you very open. You said you're going to make a turkey. I said, I doubted you, whatever, but yeah. that was no, there was no deception. But involved. just sometimes you're dealing with the miracle man there and was, you don't okay, realize Okay. It. Whatever. You okay. got your credits. Thank you. Okay. But fucking let's move on. Okay. You got your credits. You made a fucking good turkey. You'll see it on Vlogmas, by the way. Check out okay. youtube.com slash Nikki. True. We're doing Vlogmas. We're posting a vlog a day until Christmas. Guys, I don't know how I'm going to do it. Probably won't be able to. You should bet the over under on that for sure. I'm but betting anyway. Under. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Um, okay. I need the doubt so that I can be Is fooled. It 30 days under. Can I get to the fucking point? Because I'm try. about to lose my shit. So <laughs> he makes a turkey. He put, separates the fat and puts it all in a bowl, which is great. You shouldn't put that down the drain. I'm actually really happy about that. But he gets really drunk. And um, I'm at, we're at the end of the night. We're cleaning up. I'm like, you got to dump that fat and oil into a bag and then throw it in the trash can because you can't put it down the drain okay so he's like okay he gets a some shopping bags um like from you know from albertson's or whatever we shopped and like double triple bags it so that the oil won't leak everywhere and great he um i go upstairs i'm like cleaning i'm cleaning and then I come back downstairs. He goes outside. I think he's going to throw it away. I come downstairs and that the bags that he put together are empty. They're still they're still there. They're just dry. They're empty. But the grease is gone. 
So I'm like, who the fuck did you put that crease? And I was like, hey, why are the bags still there? And he's like, oh, no, no, I, I did it a different way. And I said, okay. Owning it. I, I was like, it. how'd you do it? So I didn't lie. How'd you do it? You didn't dump it on the drain. And he's like, he's like, no, 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 I, I did it. Like, I, I, I did it a different way. Don't worry about it. Didn't need the bags. Goddamn like, right. How did you not need the bags? Uh, well, he's like, well, I, I, put, um, I, what I did was I dumped it, um, and I took care of it out in front. And yep. I was like, didn't lie. Well, because I said no, you did. Because I was like, well, I heard you go outside, so I know you took it somewhere. And you were like, you're like, yeah, I took care of it out, out in front. Out in front. Okay. So then I'm like, but without the bags, you're like, yeah, I didn't need the bags. This is all correct. <laughs> You're excluding None of this is details. The next day, my brother is like, I think one of your party guests got sick outside of your house. And threw up. And threw up. Because there was what looked a like the spot. bowels of somebody <laughs> in front of our freaking house. And I was like, Steve, motherfucking green, what did you do with that turkey Miracle grease? Man. He goes out there and there's just like caked fat all over our fucking <laughs> asphalt. Driveway. Driveway. Um, and he he can't get it. I'm like, it can't go down a storm drain. What are you going to do now? And <laughs> took care of it. Doesn't matter. So I, the point is, he point excluded is those details. Why did you exclude all those details? Because um, did you think to, I was going to overreact? Be honest, to be honest. When it wasn't an overreaction? I just thought that I had, I found a cheat code and I was like, I fucking took care of the situation. And I even was telling Dane this, like last night, I was like, dude, when, when I... Was looking at those bags. I was like, "Damn, I'm gonna put those in my fucking trash can. They're gonna break, and that's just gonna be caked in the bottom of my trash can, like fucking eight inches of grease for like the next like six to eight months." And I'm like, "Cause, cause you know, you know why I had that thought actually on this night? It was because one time I put a fucking pizza box in our trash can, mm -hmm. and that thing was in there for four months. I'm not kidding, because for whatever reason, the way that these garbage um, um, trucks mechanically pick up these things yeah. because it was at the bottom of the bin it never quite is upside down long enough for the pizza box to flutter out so mm -hmm. it always is back at the bottom and so like, you were scared that i was scared grease. that we would have this grease at the bottom of our trash can for like months even with you bagging it even bagging it yeah because i thought maybe the bags could break or burst somehow okay so so i was nervous about he that he had his own reasoning but yeah. my point is and this is just like an example of maybe something that sometimes he solves things but he thinks that i won't understand so he does just That's true. doesn't but tell I me all the lie. details. I will say I didn't lie. No, you, no, you just excluded the details. Yeah, well, I was I was telling you what I did though. Right. So like this guy did he was going to catch this train at 12:03 or whatever, but he just left out the details of that he's also going to pick up Allison. Okay. But I'm not saying that your example is ex as extreme. I'm not Mine's worse. You know? <laughs> I'm not <laughs> mad about that. I'm just saying that I was trying to play devil's advocate I in a it. sense that like of if it's not bad, then why would you lie about it? Yeah. Well, sometimes people leave out details because it's not bad, but they think that their spouse is going to take it badly. I agree. I completely right? agree. I completely agree. Like, okay, I had a friend who I um, went to act like acting classes with, mm -hmm. and my ex boyfriend at the time um, was just like a really jealous type. Yeah. But like, you know me. Like, I just make I make friends, but mm -hmm. I'm. Like I'm very separate. Like I'm very loyal ever. to who I'm with. Yeah. And anyway, I just didn't think that my boyfriend would understand that. So I would give him a ride to a class, but I never told him. But it was like, kind of like that, like where I don't, I'm not attracted to this guy. I'm not going to do anything with this guy. But I think my boyfriend's going to get mad at me and throw a freaking hissy fit about it if I told him that I picked this guy up to go to class. Got it. So I just like, it's like, yeah, it's not. Uh, it's not quote unquote, it's not technically bad because there's nothing bad going on, but it is bad that I'm deceiving my partner yeah. if we have an agreement and this is something that would hurt him. Like it should be like a thing that you respect your partner enough to at least have a conversation about it. Like, like at least be like, hey, and this, I was very young at the time. I was like 20 too so like i just wasn't mature enough to maybe have these conversations but if it was steve i would say look i love you the most out of anyone in the world i would never do anything to hurt you i'm giving my friend a ride to the same class we're going to the same fucking class he's on the way he he only has one car his girlfriend drives the car like or whatever his roommate drives the car yeah. i forget what, uh, he didn't have a girlfriend so that was why it made it weird but um but like like do you trust me you know, basically, and like have yeah. that kind of like conversation, but I didn't. So anyway, with your husband, husband, it was husband, right? 
Yeah, um, husband. Yeah. 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 Um, I think he, you guys have to have a conversation about trust mm -hmm. and that like, it doesn't matter if he thinks that you're going to react a certain way. Like that's still disrespectful to you and your relationship. That's all it is. That that's all he's this is doing about. it behind your back. If you wouldn't even care if it wasn't about that, but that's yeah. what it's about. And then the fact that there was an incident where he texted a girl inappropriately, a coworker, mind you, it's kind of adding a little spark to this. Yeah, fire. Yeah. But, but, you know, if you truly forgave him for that, don't punish him for that here. Yeah. And like, I don't think she is. I don't think she is either. Like, uh, it sounds like you're be being bullshit. very reasonable. I agree. To be honest. I think, she, I think she's like handling this 100% correctly. Yeah. But um, I think that, you know, you guys are more grown up now. So it's time for more grown up conversations, exactly. on, especially on his end. Trust convos. Yeah. Trust reassurance convos. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, and let's the spending thing, like maybe reassure him that, like, you know, that he's responsible now. And like you caught him with this couple things or like sometimes he gets defensive. I think just being like everything you kind of said here, you can have the same type of conversation in the same cadence with him like of like hey i know that i did this in the past like i maybe over like reacted this way but you were different and mm -hmm. you've changed and thus i've changed so now we're two different people and i think we should trust each other more in that yeah. like i trust you not to overspend and i trust you not to cheat on me so i would per i would like not prefer like i demand the respect enough to have clear transparent communication about what we're doing like things just, i just don't want to feel like things are hidden from me yeah there is a part of this that makes me nervous and it's only that um if she does confront him and yeah. he doesn't just like go man i'm sorry yeah and own it and he mm -hmm. like deflects or something then i would be worried that maybe there is something going on yeah yeah That's i mean if, trust your instincts with that yeah. but like I don't think there's anything. Give the benefit of the doubt yeah. until, until that, but yeah, you know that that's the only thing about this that's like, there's like a, you know, you ever heard the term the bomb under the table? It's like a film term, but it's like the audience sees the bomb under the table, and then there's two people who are talking at a dinner table, and so the audience sees the tension and like how much more intense this is, yeah. than like the two people in the conversation do, right? Like that's kind of what this feels like if that is the case, right? True, yeah. Yeah. true, true, true. So like, you know, try and listen for the ticking of a bomb under the yes. table maybe. Yes. But um, I think that's a good starting point is to just have some transparent communication. And I think like, you know, at a time where it's not directly after an event so you don't get emotional and like, you know, your your emotions block the communication in a way that he can actually hear it. I think that's really important that like you can clearly communicate like your thoughts and feelings while also being kind of detached from those feelings. Amen. Um, but yeah, I don't think you're out of line on like feeling this way. Uh, you're, by the way, bravo. Yeah. I, I don't think you could have handled this better. Like, if I had to even write it, I don't. No. Like, like from the most like zoomed out place. And I think the huge takeaway here from this episode is don't fucking lie to your partner. Yeah, that's true. They're, like every single question so far has been people finding out yeah. some missing information or some shit that people like their partners are lying to. Them. If you lie to your partner, they're going to find out. If you care about your partner, you, you're going to hurt them exactly. and you're going to fucking feel bad. And I don't, I just don't do it. Just don't fucking do it. <laughs> if you think that you need to hide something from them, then maybe you should reevaluate your relationship in the and maybe there's an Amen. underlying issue that you need to to work on and maybe that will like shed some light on things maybe think about that before you're hiding something from your partner there it is by the way if you try to hide shit from me i will find out she'll find out she's a computer brain sometimes steve tries to like lie to me because he's like there's like a surprise <laughs> like oh he played like God. a surprise yeah. and like, like I, I was like grease in the street she's gonna love it no not that one. <laughs> i was like she's gonna fucking love but like this. i like i always find out always i'm always like wait what, what about that like why is that weird that's weird know, what you're doing looks weird you know what's the worst thing too is finding out like years later like three years later mm -hmm. that you knew the night i was going to propose to you <laughs> like you knew i was going to do it already I told and mom. i was shitting fucking bricks sideways yeah. like through my asshole and like you know come to find out later i didn't have to be that nervous because nah. like, you already knew i'm surprised you actually were that nervous like oh my we, we had God. talked about getting married so much so many times but it's such a you know it's it's one thing to talk about something it's a different thing to jump out of the airplane with the parachute on yeah. and hope that you pull it and it goes off right yeah. like that's the thing like that's what it felt like so 
That's cute. I'm glad it felt like that. Of course it felt like that. Like if it didn't feel like that, that would be weird. I agree with you, but yeah. Yeah. It was a trip. But yeah, I did piece that together because I was like, it's my birthday. It's my favorite place in the world. We've talked about getting engaged so much. <laughs> like, um, if he doesn't do it here, then he's fucking stupid. If he doesn't do it here, he's trying to make it really a surprise and he's really overthinking shit. Which is dumb. But I'm like... Which, by the way, some guys do and that's dumb, by the way. Just don't don't be dumb. Yeah. Like, my dad proposed to my mom in an elevator to surprise... And it's like, dude, just fucking what the fuck. Yeah, I like that it was in my favorite it's place. Somewhere like, nice. Somewhere nice, yeah. What the fuck? You do it in an elevator? No. I do wish we had a picture of it, but that's it. I know. I should have... I should have... Yeah. That's okay. I should have thought about that. So that's like my... The only thing I found I, out. I completely agree. When did this thing go off? Oh, he went off like like 10 ago, but I, but you were in the middle of a really good point. And I didn't want to cut you uh, off. Ah, damn. It was good, though. It was good to let you flow. All right. Well, soon we will solve this camera battery issue. Yes. Mark. Mark. The Mark. Mark has, so, Mark has, has sent us some Christmas gifts. Pretty some much early Christmas gifts of adapters. We're just waiting on the missing parts. And, and it's going to be done. It will be done. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Again, if you have a question you would like us to answer on this podcast, it can be about anything. It does not have to be a relationships, although that is the thing we are probably most knowledgeable on. Definitely. Um, just after working through all the shit that they didn't tell us that we had to work through. Through many failing relationships. Yeah. Yep. Having found each other in the end. And like actually knowing that that's out there and that you, and like I think that anyone can have that and I want everyone as possible to have it and we're spreading it like a weird religion it is like a weird religion multiple of our friends now have done steve and nikki theory yeah and it's been and they've found massively successful actual Go love figure. not the misery bullshit that they were commiserating they did not have before to settle. they didn't have to settle and, and a bunch of their miserable friends we're like that's were how telling, relationships it's normal. are this is, this you just a just like stop loving each other every day bro love's a chemical and we're not even supposed to be monogamous bro like okay. love is like lighting off a firework sometimes your fingers get blown up yeah, okay. Oh, we just work through it, okay? <sighs> Jesus. Wow. So now now some of our friends have done Steve and Nikki theory, and they're like, holy shit. Yeah. I didn't even know that it could ever, I didn't ever be I this didn't way. I didn't believe you guys. Yep. I didn't think thought it was, it was possible. I thought you guys were one in a million. I like, you guys no. were using, like smoke and lights it's and like trickery. That, you know that saying, misery loves company? Well, yes. so does love, guys. Exactly. People in love want company, too. Exactly. We want you to be happy. We, we want you to find dates. this. And we want, yeah, we want to, ultimately, and to spread the religion of Stephen Nicky theory love. Stephen Nicky theory is all about us getting more couples dates. Love theory optimal. That are not awkward, non awkward couples dates. Yeah. I fucking love it. It's LTO theory. Exactly. All right. Uh, that's it for today. Thanks for submitting your questions. Check out our Patreon. Check out the Vlogmas, youtube.com slash Nikki. There it is. And I will see you next week. Goodbye. Bye bye.